Lord, thank you. We will all offer the prayer of meditation. God of love, God of blessings, God who makes us one, God who forgives because we can't forgive others. We don't even know that we're going to hell. Please have pity on us. In Christ, we're one. By the Holy Spirit, you say you'll make us one. But our spouse relationship isn't even one, and yet we're mistaken by in ourselves thinking that we're going to heaven. You know, our families aren't even one, and yet we're deceived thinking that we love you. Have pity on us. I can't do it, but in Christ you make us one. By the Holy Spirit you say that you'll make us one. According to this word, may we receive blessings. May our, so our country and our people, we're always arguing. If we bite and tear each other down, then we'll both be destroyed. But, but you know, we can't see this. Have pity on us. If we genuinely love our neighbor, even though they, they hate to hear it, then by this word, you know, we can exhort them. But instead of exhorting, we slander, which is the death sentence. Help us to awaken from this de death sentence where, where we killed three and four generations. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Please repeat after me, sheep. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. Let's find this. I have to receive blessings for my children to receive blessings. I have to do well for my children to do well. So if you make excuses to the word, then you're a, you're a demon. Whatever word, if you say amen, if you, don't, if you don't obey, if you don't say amen, if you don't obey, then you'll receive curses. Where is that? Deuteronomy chapter 27. Chapter 27. Chapter 27. So, yes, you're right. Why am I doing this? So that you know it properly. Demons, even though it's in the Bible, they scoff at it, then you, you'll receive curses. That's someone who is so pitiful. There is nothing for us to do to the word except obey. But when you hear the Bible being preached, you know, you see these people who make excuses about it. That person is so pitiful. Let's find Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 26, and read this first. Why would you do the things to receive curses? Even though he tells us to receive blessings, we should just receive blessings. Our people, you know, if we all live to receive blessings, if a million people live like this, would our country be like this? Who is it these days that ends up going to prison? Who is it that brings curses upon God? It's all of these fake churchgoers. So even though they bring curses upon him, they don't even know. If you bite and tear each other down, who will be ruined? Galatians chapter 5 verse 15. If you bite and tear each other, both will be ruined because both are the same. What kind of Jesus do you believe in that you bite and tear each other down and, you know, fight with each other in that same way? You know, if you're, you're being ruined, you think God's going to help you? So if you're doing these bad things and you say you believe in Jesus, how can you give glory? You kill others and then you sit there giving worship that doesn't even make sense and yet it's like with like and they take each other's side you know it's like with like whose side whose whose side do they take a dog do they take the side of a man no they take the side of a dog a dog a cow takes the side of a cow that's what the 66 books records so whose side am i taking Taking sides, is that a man? Going justly, that is a man. So let's read together. Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 26. Cursed is he who does not confirm the words of this law by doing them. And all the people shall say, Amen. So this law, the 66 books of the Bible. So by this law, what do you do? 
What do you do with this law? So if you want to act out this law, what do you, what do you have to do with your sin? So you have to realize your sin and then completely and then completely act. If you don't do this, then what happens? So the law makes us realize our sin. You look at the Bible. Why do you say you have nothing to repent of? That's some strange demon. All of it makes us realize our sin. So to realize your sin, if you don't act exactly after that, then what what returns to you? So those people who go to fake churches, all they do are things to receive curses. Curses, is that salvation or, or blessings? No, there's no salvation, there's no blessings. Your children don't do well. Tomorrow, your life becomes worse. So all of this word, you know, for us to... It's when we, it's when we keep it exactly. That's when we have salvation. That's why we're told to say Amen. Two Corinthians chapter one verse twenty. Without saying Amen, you'll go to hell. And yet they won't say Amen. So because you don't repent, it doesn't come out. I'm sure you experienced it. So if you repent, it comes out. If you don't, it won't come out. So the one who can't say it, that's someone who is evil. God says that they're a dog pig. How can a dog pig expect to be to be treated like a man? If you can't say amen, then you're a beast that is perishing. How can a beast that is perishing expect to be treated like a man? It's so sad. You know, you know, you say, oh, these people are acknowledging me. So what? If dog pigs are acknowledging me, if you depart from the faith, that's a dog pig. That's two Peter. Two Peter, chapter two, verse twenty-two. Two Peter, chapter two, verse twenty-two. So if you depart from the gift of faith, that person is a dog pig. God has said they're a dog pig. So you know, are you going to say it's not because you think you're? greater than God? No, you're asking for death. We have to obey the word. If you don't obey, then you'll go to hell. So if the Bible says, dog, pig, you have to do that exactly. Oh, I'm better than God, so I won't say that. Already you're going to hell. So God has told us to receive blessings. Why does it not work? So I'm pointing out why you're not doing well. But for us, we still have a way to receive blessings. Even though your parents didn't believe it in Jesus, they live so evilly, I can re- still receive blessings. You know, I didn't believe in God and lived in sin till I'm 70 or 80. But if you obey this word, then, then you will fix your destiny. You can pass blessings down to yourself and your children. That's the life we have to live. This is the only way to live. This is why we're here. Let's do well. So by the blood of Christ, to be forgiven of our sins, this incredible promise, this is the mystery of Christ. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, this is the mystery of Christ. So if you don't even know the, the mystery, even though you may be employed for a thousand years, if you don't receive the security clearance, you're not going to receive the secrets. So if someone doesn't even know the secrets and you say, yeah, I know the secrets. What do you mean you know? Even though you may live a life of faith for a thousand years, if you don't know this mystery, uh, the mystery of God that he's appointed, then you just don't know the mystery. So what is this mystery? It is Christ, where Christ enters inside of you. So God has promised this and he says the relationship between you and I it's one of love let's find 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 so we have to receive this love so as long as you love God you receive all of these uh, surprise uh, these surprising amazing blessings you say that you love but when God looks at it it's not love that's why it's a problem so if you have difficulties in your family so it's what my ancestors and I have done. Before you say, oh, my destiny so bad, you know, you're cursing your ancestors, saying that they're so bad. So in whatever circumstance, don't grumble or complain, but 
by the blood of Christ to give thanks by washing it all. So no matter how filthy your ancestors, you become clean. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. So just know that your ancestors have passed these filthy things down to you and that you can be forgiven. So don't grumble. If you grumble, God, he will kill the person that grumbles. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. But as soon as you find life a little bit difficult, you'll grumble against your parent, your husband, you know, someone embezzles you that you grumble against them. That's because, you know, you have, you and your ancestors have embezzled others, so it's come back to you. You look at your family, you know, those households that have lung disease, that's what comes down. You know, if there's if there's mental illness in that family, that's what comes down. Those households that, you know, die from liver disease, that's what comes down. You know, if, if within two, three years you get embezzled, you can't ever get past five years, you know, that goes down to your children. So we cannot, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, but God says he'll get rid of all that. How good is this news? So even though you're completely ruined, he says, don't worry. I'll save you. I'll make you live. That's Proverbs. So even though it's uh, 14 verse 27, even though he's promised us something this good, we can't receive. So my heart, it's all demons. But the heart that God guards over, it's not demons. The heart that God guards over, when, from when does this happen? It's when Christ, by the mystery of Christ, Christ enters inside of me. When we continue to keep that place, then God comes and then he gives the, the gift of the Holy Spirit. If, you, if the Holy Spirit enters, then you'll have love. What happens if you have love? It doesn't just end with that love. It means that the Holy Spirit is there. If the Holy Spirit is inside of you, you don't have your thoughts and your theories because the demons have left. So if the demons have left and you don't have your thoughts and your theories, then whether it's this way or that way, there is no loss. But if you have your thoughts always, your face is stiffened because you have demons. The Holy Spirit you start by having love. Secondly, you have this joy. So someone with the Holy Spirit, you're always smiling. So it's different. What am I like? Have a look upon yourself. What kind of person am I? Do I truly have joy and want others to do well? Or, you know, I should say something to that demon that's always like this. That's love. That's someone who has joy. But if you don't feel anything towards that person, then, you know, I've got demons, you've got demons, so you don't say anything. Love doesn't just leave people alone. You know, if, if you're sleeping in late, then does your neighbor come in and say something? If your husband's sleeping late, you know, does the next door neighbor say anything? No. It has to be your family in order for you to say something. And so, if you can't genuinely love that person next to you, then staying from you, you're, you're a fake. That's Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13. If you can't say anything to the person next to you, you know, to say, looking at you, you have demons. Your face is stiff. You, you know, your face is stiff. You can't even... So my wife said that to someone. That's because you have love. If you don't have love, then whether they have demons or whatever, they you just leave them. Let's let's read one Corinthians chapter two verse nine. But just as it is written, things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love Him. Amen. If you just love God. He says, I prepared all things. Why can't you receive? Because you haven't loved. So our whole country is like, oh, we're, you know, dying. And why can't you receive? 
when God's prepared everything. So have you loved? So why isn't you attend church? Why aren't you receive, receiving blessings? Have you loved or not? No. So someone who doesn't love, is that a man? No, they're evil. You know, someone who doesn't even love God, how can that even be a man? It is so sad. So he says he's prepared all blessings. Why? Why can't you take them? When he says to take them, oh, pastor, I'm, I feel so frustrated. I want to receive. I'm so crazy to receive. That's why I'm here. But it's by what? Let's read verse 10. So he has prepared all the blessings in front of you. All you have to do is love to take them. Why can't you receive? Because you haven't received the Holy Spirit. You still have demons inside of you. That's why you don't receive. So let's read verse 10. For to us God revealed them through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. Amen. Your relatives, your siblings, you, you call them your relatives and siblings, but you see in the law courts, who is it that's fighting? You know, if the father leaves behind some a bit of money, are you fighting with the next door neighbor? No, it's, it's amongst the siblings. It's amongst the brothers and sisters. It's amongst the cousins. It's, um, you know, it's all within the family, the household. So fighting within your household, is that being siblings? No, you're complete enemies. Who does God say is your is your brother or sister? Let's find Mark chapter 3, the last verse. It is so sad. You choose all the things not to receive blessings. And then you say, I'm not receiving blessings. You don't even know who your parents, your brothers are. So then if you receive a bit of blessings, you just want to go with the dog pigs and end up fighting. So how can he give to you? It's so sad. So your parents, wealth, you know, the the gold ring from your mother. Oh, if I just sold that, it would have been $1,000. Oh, but my brother's taking that. You know, is that a man? That's a dog pig. That's why God can't give to you. You don't even know who your parents, your your brothers are. So how can you expect to receive blessings? Let's read together. For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. Amen. So doing according to whose will is your brother and sister? So what is God's will? It's to give thanks in all things. It is four-step repentance. So doing that, that is my parents and my siblings. Those who don't do this, you see if they have a good spouse relationship, if you're not living by the will of God. If you're not living according to the will of God, you see if parents and the children relationship is good. You see if you're not living according to the will of God, if your sibling relationship is good. It's not. So he's prepared everything. Why can't you receive? Because you haven't received the Holy Spirit. You can't see him with your eyes so someone who doesn't receive the holy spirit what's inside of them matthew chapter 12 verse 28 it's because they have demons if you have demons you cannot see the blessings in front of you so it's not god who's giving us blessings he's already put it there saying take it and yet we can't take them why can't we take them because we haven't received the Holy Spirit. If you don't receive the Holy Spirit, then the demons inside of you don't depart. If you have demons inside of you, how can you receive blessings? You say, do I have blessings? According to the Bible, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you have demons. If you receive the Holy Spirit, that's by being cursed for the name of Christ. Let's find 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 14. So someone who receives the Holy Spirit, by four-step repentance, there's someone who is cursed. That is someone who is blessed. To them, the Holy Spirit comes. So the reason why you can't take the blessings in front of you, you say you're doing false day repentance. Who curses me? If no one does, you know, if it's because you still have demons inside of you. So how can your diseases be healed? How can you receive blessings? How can you have happiness? How can your spouse relationship and your children do well? And then you talk about being a patriot. How can someone who is evil be a patriot? It is so sad.
No matter how clean poo is, it smells like poo. You know, you say, oh, pasta, still, this is American poo. It doesn't matter if it's American or German poo, it's still dirty. How can you say these, these crazy things? It has to be good to have a good smell. But, you know, that waste, it, it smells like that waste. So how can you expect it to smell good? Let's read together. So you have to receive the Holy Spirit to be able to see with your eyes. God's put all the blessings in front of you. And to those who love, he's given it to them. Am I someone who loves or not? Only by the Holy Spirit can you do uh, differentiate because the Holy Spirit is love. If you've received the Holy Spirit, then your demons have departed. Not just that, but you will love your neighbor. So these people who say they believe in Jesus, do they love? Then if you've loved, then you should tell others about how to do well. But instead of, they should be saying this, but they curse and they slander. So then God, that's the death sentence to three and four generations. Even if you're a pastor or whoever, three and four generations, he would give the death sentence. So how can those children do well? That's Romans chapter 1, verse 30 to 32. But to not even know this, and you go around to church and slandering others, someone who has received the death sentence, how can the household do well? So looking at the way the parents act, those children who received the death sentence, they end up being problematic to create. They don't give benefit. You know, they waste the taxes. They do all sorts of things. Let's live rightly. Let's read together. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Amen. So by the name of Christ, this by this mystery of God to realize Christ, where Christ comes inside of me, by this mystery of Christ, it's when you're cursed for this, that's when you're a blessed man. How come? That's because the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That's when your demons depart. That's when you're able to see the blessings that God's put in front of you. That's when you can be blessed. Today, is this amen? May we all receive this blessing. With this blessing, may we all do well. Your descendants do well. No matter what anyone says, we have to do well. God wants us to do well. Who wants you to be ruined? The demons want you to be ruined. Those who are perishing want you to be ruined. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Let's find it. So who is it that ruins you? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. It's those with demons. They want to block you, hinder you, stop you from doing this. And it's those who are perishing. They want to hinder you and block you. Why? Why be deceived by that? Why follow up after that and be deceived? God, he knows all of your thoughts and your actions. So there's nothing to throw the stone at anyone. All we have to do is repent. We have to repent. Let's live by this good promise. He's, re he's prepared all blessings. So may our eyes be opened by the Holy Spirit and may we receive everything to go to heaven, to take everything. We have to receive these blessings. It will happen. Let's all pray. Oh, I just have to receive curses by the name of Christ. That doesn't mean go just do anything and be cursed. Christ gives benefit to others. Christ makes others joyful. So it's when you give profit and joy and then to still be cursed, that's when you're a blessed man. Father, I know my family a little, but we're so filthy. We've done. We've been informants, and so that's why in my grandfather's time we lived well. But now we see it's all sin. Our parents weren't able to do this, so my parents, you know, you know, they were good. They didn't do those bad things, but. It's because they didn't know that they didn't do those bad things. But, you know, they're still evil. So it's not for us to grumble. 
or curse or throw the stone at our ancestors, but for us to repent. Whatever sin to say, that's mine, and to repent. May we become like this. Because we have these filthy demons, we hate to hear God's word. That's how evil we are. Have pity on us. Father, what kind of person am I? But what's going to happen tomorrow? Lord, may we become a blessed man where tomorrow is better, where our children, they do better, and where our country does better. May all of us go that way together. May we become a blessed man by being cursed for the name of Christ. May we have this love and joy by the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit, may we cast out the evil spirits inside of us so that our eyes are open and we can take the blessings in front of us. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen.